Just over a week after he became the first ever ex-president charged in criminal court, Donald Trump is doing his best to obstruct the Manhattan District Attorney's case against him. He is suing the key witness, his former fixer, Michael Cohen, for, get this, half a billion dollars. He's also continuing to trash D.A. Alvin Bragg, who just received another letter containing a white powder, a picture of Donald Trump, and a death threat. Not only that, Trump has sicked his congressional lackeys on Bragg. The Republican chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Jim Jordan, is heading to New York on Monday to hold a roadshow hearing into the case. And as Jordan indicated on Fox today, the Manhattan case isn't the only Trump issue he's worried about. I think you're going to see, I think you're going to see the state of Georgia go after President Trump. I hope it doesn't happen. I think you may see the special counsel go after President Trump. I hope it doesn't happen. But that's just how, how ridiculous the left has become. And it's not good, not good at all for our great country. Yeah. Andrew Weissman served as the lead prosecutor on Robert Mueller's special counsel team. He's the co-host of the MSNBC podcast, Prosecuting Donald Trump, and he joins me now. First of all, Andrew, I found it sort of comical as uh, Jordan ticks through the different cases outstanding against Trump. The, 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 they show how crazy the left is, as opposed to maybe the person at the center of this is, is, is not the best dude. Yes, at some point, uh, a certain segment of the American public will say, you know what, maybe one was wrong, maybe two was wrong, but really four. Um, and especially, well, there can be a debate in the current Manhattan case about, you know, the issue is, would anyone else having done this been charged? You cannot make that argument with respect to anything involving January 6th, where so many scores and scores and scores of foot soldiers have been charged. And if the proof is there that Donald Trump led those foot soldiers in, a, frankly, a, a, in a much more concerted way than just what happened on January 6th, there's no argument that he should somehow be singled out for immunity uh, as the leader. And the same thing in Mar-a-Lago. Um, you know, we did a whole study at NYU on how that statute in taking classified documents, unlawfully retaining them, obstructing is prosecuted and people who have done far less than what the former president appears to have done have all faced prosecution. Yeah, and there's there's some nuggets emerging from Jack Smith's investigation into that part of, of the story having to do with those documents and perhaps the motive for them. Uh, this is in the New York Times today. The federal investigators are asking witnesses whether former President Donald J. Trump, sh Trump showed off to aides and visitors a map he took with him when he left office that contains sensitive intelligence information for people with knowledge of the matter said. Do you think there's legal—I mean, it's a sort of dazzling detail and somewhat comical in a weird, perverse way. But do you think there's legal significance to that line of question? Yes. Um, it is not necessary for a criminal case to show dissemination. Uh, you can be charged with intentionally— taking government documents without disseminating them thereafter. The same thing, you can unlawfully retain classified documents and you don't have to disseminate them. However, it is a important factor for, I think, public acceptance of the charge and also to explain to a jury why you should care that the person then disseminated them to somebody who did not have clearance. That is precisely the risk that the United States government and the intelligence community does not want to see happen. I mean, we're living through, uh, you know, an intelligence breach right now, and that it doesn't help if people can willy-nilly just take classified documents and stick them in their beach resort. There's also another bit of reporting on, on Jack Smith's other line of inquiry, which has to do with January 6th, as you mentioned up at the top. And I thought that was interesting because it was something that the January 6th committee zeroed in on, which is how much of the big lie was a moneymaker for Donald Trump. He, he raised just insane amounts of money uh, in the aftermath of the election, I think hundreds of millions of dollars, if I'm not mistaken. And there's reporting in The Washington Post today that that's a line of inquiry that prosecutors are pursuing. They're said to be interested in whether anyone associated with the fundraising operation violated wire fraud laws, which make it illegal to make false representations over email to swindle people out of money. Do you think that's a, a colorable case? Yeah, so this, this is my former life. I was head of the fraud section at the Department of Justice. And, you know, this is something that January 6th committee outlined, which is whether this was part of 
uh, the motivation, which is the grift, which is you know telling people that there'd been election fraud and then asking for money based on that. Um, wire fraud and mail fraud are um, really common charges um, by federal prosecutors. It's still, though, I, I'm, I'm not surprised that the Department of Justice is looking into this. It, there's still a long way to go to make sure yeah. that you can prove that there was knowledge and intent and that you can prove that beyond a reasonable doubt. But I'm not surprised at all that that's something they would be pursuing in light of the evidence that was turned up in the January 6th committee. Um, so I, I think it's, it's obviously necessary that they go down that, that avenue and see if there's anything there. I just don't know that we know enough yet to know whether there really is. Yeah.